are three basic attitudes that one can take to the question of progress in the area of race relations. The first is the attitude of extreme optimism. The optimist would contend that we have come a long way in race relations. He would point proudly to the marvelous strides that have been made in the area of civil rights over the last few decades. From this, he would conclude that the problem is just about to be solved and that we can sit comfortably by the wayside and wait for the coming of the inevitable. The second attitude that one can take toward the question of progress in the area of race relations is that of extreme pessimism. The pessimist would argue that we have made only minor strides in the area of race relations. He would contend that the present tension which we witness in certain sections of the nation is fit testimony to the fact that we have created more problems than we have solved. The third attitude that one can take toward the question of progress in race relations is the realistic attitude. Like the synthesis of Hegelian philosophy, the realistic attitude seeks to reconcile the truths of two opposites and avoid the extremes of both. So the realist in race relations would agree with the optimist in saying, we have come a long way. But he would balance that by agreeing with the pessimist that we have a long, long way to go. It was in the year of 1619 that enslaved Africans first landed on the shores of this nation. They were brought here from the souls of Africa, and they were brought against their wills. In time, many Black people lost faith in themselves and came to believe that perhaps they were inferior. The tragedy of physical slavery was that it gradually led to the paralysis of mental slavery as the mind and soul became enslaved. So long as Black people were willing to accept this place, racial peace was maintained. But it was an uneasy peace in which Black people were forced patiently to accept injustice, insult, and exploitation. Truly, it was an obnoxious negative peace, for true peace is not merely the absence of some negative force, confusion, tension, and war, but the presence of some positive force, justice, goodwill, brotherhood. For years, we accepted this negative peace. Then something happened. Black people began to reevaluate themselves. They came to feel that they were somebody. With this new self-respect and a new sense of dignity, the negative peace was rapidly undermined. The tension which we are witnessing in race relations today is to be explained in part by the revolutionary change in our self-regard and determination to struggle and sacrifice until the walls of injustice crumble. The story of Montgomery is a story of black people who are tired of injustices and oppression and who are willing to substitute tired feet for tired souls and walk and walk until the walls of injustice are crushed by the battering rams of historical necessity. We have come a long way since 1619, but we cannot stop there. To stop here would mean to become victims of an optimism, which would blind our eyes to the true realities of the situation. To stop here would mean to become victims of an illusion wrapped in a superficiality. We must go on to affirm that we have a long, long way to go. We have a moral obligation to press on. Our self-respect is at stake.